Okay, on to chapter six. This is the trig formula sheet. You should review this before starting the notes. So I'm going to put in a big rectangle in red. Most of the formulas that people usually get, you may or may not get these ones as well. And this gigantic box down here, which I'm going to talk about second, is some nice little little methods, little good things to do all the time as a checklist or process or whichever. Down at the bottom are three formulas that sometimes people see. Um, without them to do certain problems are very difficult using only the rectangle above, but find out from your teacher, print it off, ask them which ones you need to know. So let's start at the top, uh, the Pythagorean identities. Pythagorean identities. Sine squared theta plus cos squared theta is equal to one. Uh, we use that one a lot, all the time, just like, just like 90% of the time. 99, 99, eh, whatever, a lot. Uh, two off to the right, we're gonna use not so much, but those are identities and we'll talk about them later. The reciprocal identities right below, reciprocal and quotient identities, we're going to use those all the time. This one, this one, this one, which we've spoken about before, and the two off to the right, which we've spoken about before. We're going to use all the time, 99%, all those, 99%. The addition identities down below, we have to recognize if we see certain patterns, these are patterns. Sine always has the same sign. Cos is the opposite sign. Sine is sine cos, cos sine. Again, sine cos, cos sine. And cos is cos cos, sine sine. And again, cos cos, sine sine. So if you ever either recognize the pattern on the left or the pattern on the right, you have to be able to convert it to the other, no problem. Down below, double angle identities. They're called double angles because we double the angle. And the next part of the, this video, I'm going to talk about how we get back and forth between the different two, specifically using the Pythagorean identity and double angle identities, which we're gonna go over later in the notes. But specifically, cosine two theta has three options. So we're rarely going to substitute immediately with that one. We're always going to substitute this one. Sine 2 theta has one option. So anytime we see sine 2 theta, if we want to get it into sines and coses, turn it right into 2 sine theta cos theta. But because back to the left, cosine 2 theta has three options, again, sometimes we're going to hold off and work on other parts and just then later decide which one we want to substitute. And down to the bottom really quickly, these formulas for tan. Some schools use them, some don't. So I'm going to put a big blue box around the rectangle. I've spent eight years, if not 36, developing. So I'm going to circle it, them in red, top left. Our first method, use the trig identities above and get it into sines and coses as quickly as possible. Below that, fractions. Simplifying, adding and subtracting. LCD, due to the top, due to the bottom. Multiply by one, flip and multiply. Separate fractions. Below. You know what? Off to the right for a second. Complex fractions. Remember, Adding and subtracting fractions on the top and the bottom and then flipping and multiplying is the same thing as multiplying the top and bottom by the LCD. Either try it or learn about it somewhere else later in our calculus. But I would prefer you do the top method until university and start doing the bottom method, even though teachers do it. So just beware, they're lazy. Just remember, if they do it, just go, they just added fractions and they flipped and multiplied. Got it. Okay, down below on the left is factoring. Obviously remembering, checking by distribution or FOIL. 
and factoring in different types like greatest common factor, trinomials, and differences of squares, being very familiar with those patterns because we used to work with them with letters, now we're going to work with them with trig functions like sine and cosine. Off to the right, choose a cos two theta. So I'm going to circle in blue, gigantic blue above, one of the double angle identities. And remember, cos 2 theta has three options. So down below again, I'm going to circle in big blue, and I'm going to put a big arrow for down from what I'm talking about. So these three options. So you want to choose the cos 2 theta that's going to cross off the 1 or combine with the other numbers or the sine squared theta or the cos squared theta or factors well or works well with negative distribution. And you decide which one of these three options for cos 2 theta. Again, off to the right, sine theta has one option. So sine 2 theta has one option. So if you ever see it, put 2 sine theta cos theta in for it right away. So we got one option, but back to the left. Cos 2 theta has three options. So once again, we want to choose the cos 2 theta to cross off the one or combine with the numbers or the sine squared or the cos squared or factors well or works well with a negative distribution. Now onto this same formula sheet in a little bit of a different form doing a little bit of algebra with some of the equations. So let's take a look at that. So at the top, we have the first Pythagorean identity in the top left-hand corner of your trig formula sheet. The Pythagorean identity sine squared theta plus cos squared theta is equal to 1, which means that a little bit of really elementary sort of theory, proof type, introduction to it. It's not scientific, but well, sine squared theta is opposite over hypotenuse. And cos squared theta is adjacent over hypotenuse. Squared equals 1. Square them both. Times both sides by h squared, and we get the Pythagorean identity. a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Think about it. I won't do the proofs off to the right, but that's why they're all called the Pythagorean identities. Now back to this sine squared plus cos squared equals 1. Notice I don't say the theta all the time. Sine squared x plus cos squared x equals 1. Mathematicians are lazy and we don't like to say unnecessary things when they obviously mean the same thing. So sine squared plus cos squared equals 1. So it's a little bit more poetic. So some very useful algebra, a good word. If I take it and I'm going to overline it in big red and I either subtract cosine squared from both sides or sine squared from both sides, I get these two very interesting, very useful substitutions for either sine squared or cos squared. If you think about it, on the right hand side, 1 minus cos squared is actually a difference of squares. 1 plus cos, 1 minus cos. 1 minus sine squared is a differences of, co differences of squares. 1 plus sine, 1 minus sine. Other identities, sine over cos equals tan through division and flip and multiply and secant the same way. Notice we're going to have to get really good at our flip and multiply. And that's how we get our other three definitions. And now this double angle thing. Just going to believe me for a bit. And later I'm going to actually prove it, or I'm going to actually talk about proving it. I just copied it off the internet. But if we look at the big arrow, big arrows, and on the left-hand side, if I break 2x up into x plus x, and then I use the addition and identity of sine x plus x is sine x cos x plus cos x sine x, you'll understand it a little bit later. Well, that's equal to 2 sine squared x cos x, so that's why it's equal to the right-hand side. Down below, cos squared x, cos 2x is equal to cos squared x minus sine squared x. And on the left-hand side, if we break up the 2x into x plus x, and we use the addition identity to expand a cos x plus x, well, that means that it's a cos x cos x minus sine x sine x. Very poetic. And we still know that it's equal to the right-hand side. So now, just sort of running and round in circles around the formulas just so you kind of get 
in a feeling of how they work. So now the bottom one on the left, y is cos 2x equal to two other things. Well, it's also equal to cos squared x minus sine squared x for all sorts of reasons. And if I overline the cos 2x that we talked about, er, cos squared x that I talked about earlier is equal to 1 minus sine squared x, you can see where I put it in above the first line in brackets. And then that simplifies, and that gives the, third, the second identity for cos 2x. And we do very similar work over here, which you probably can't see on the bottom of the video. Print off the notes. Print off the notes. Uh, so sort of seeing how all these formulas work together and whatnot, but I can't stress enough. Back to the first page. Really understanding this big, huge box. And I've decided to simplify this gigantic box into four things. Oh, you know what? I never talked about the conjugate in that box. Conjugate. Watch the video later in the chapter. So in the top right-hand corner, I'm going to red box the methods. IDs, using the formulas below. Fractions, adding and subtracting fractions, multiplying and dividing fractions, flipping and multiplying, separating fractions, LCD, etc. All the rules we learned in grade 8 with fractions. Factoring. Greatest common factor, trinomials, differences of squares, etc. And then the conjugate. If we're really good at those, I'm going to outline them top right in blue again. Identities, fractions, factoring, conjugate. We're going to be really good at these next sections.